The equation of time describes the discrepancy between two kinds of solar time. The word equation is used in the medieval sense of reconcile a difference. The two times that differ are the apparent solar time, which directly tracks the diurnal motion of the sun, and mean solar time, which tracks a theoretical mean sun with noons 24 hours apart. Apparent solar time can be obtained by measurement of the current position hour angle of the sun, as indicated with limited accuracy by a sundial. Mean solar time, for the same place, would be the time indicated by a steady clock set so that over the year its differences from apparent solar time would resolve to zero. The equation of time is the east or west component of the analemma, a curve representing the angular offset of the Sun from its mean position on the celestial sphere as viewed from Earth. The equation of time values for each day of the year, compiled by astronomical observatories, were widely listed in almanacs and ephemerides. The concept During a year the equation of time varies as shown on the graph, its change from one year to the next is slight. Apparent time, and the sundial, can be ahead fast by as much as 16 minutes 33 s around the 3rd of November, or behind slow by as much as 14 minutes 6 s around 12 February. The equation of time has zeros near the 15th of April 13 June, the 1st of September and the 25th of December. Ignoring very slow changes in the Earth's orbit and rotation, these events are repeated at the same times every tropical year. However, due to the non-integer number of days in a year, these dates can vary by a day or so from year to year. The graph of the equation of time is closely approximated by the sum of two sine curves, one with a period of a year and one with a period of half a year. The curves reflect two astronomical effects, each causing a different non-uniformity in the apparent daily motion of the Sun relative to the stars. The obliquity of the ecliptic, the plane of the Earth's annual orbital motion around the Sun, which is inclined by about 23.44 degrees relative to the plane of the Earth's equator, and the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit around the Sun, which is about 0.0167. The equation of time is constant only for a planet with zero axial tilt and zero orbital eccentricity. On Mars, the difference between sundial time and clock time can be as much as 50 minutes, due to the considerably greater eccentricity of its orbit. The planet Uranus, which has an extremely large axial tilt, has an equation of time that makes its days start and finish several hours earlier or later depending on where it is in its orbit. <laughs> Sign of the equation of time There is no universally accepted definition of the sign of the equation of time. Some publications show it as positive when a sundial is ahead of a clock, as shown in the upper graph above, others when the clock is ahead of the sundial, as shown in the lower graph. In the English-speaking world, the former usage is the more common, but is not always followed. Anyone who makes use of a published table or graph should first check its sign usage. Often, there is a note or caption which explains it. Otherwise, the sign can be determined by knowing that, during the first three months of each year, the clock is ahead of the sundial. The mnemonic, NYSS, pronounced nice for New Year, sundial slow, can be useful. Some published tables avoid the ambiguity by not using signs, but by showing phrases such as sundial fast or sundial slow. Instead, in this article, and others in English Wikipedia, a positive value of the equation of time implies that a sundial is ahead of a clock. History The phrase, equation of time, is derived from the medieval Latin equatio dirum, meaning, equation of days, or, difference of days. The word equatio was widely used in early astronomy to tabulate the difference between an observed value and the expected value as in the equation of center, the equation of the equinoxes, the equation of the epicycle. The difference between apparent solar time and mean time was recognized by astronomers since antiquity, but prior to the invention of accurate mechanical clocks in the mid-17th century, sundials were the only reliable timepieces, and apparent solar time was the generally accepted standard. Mean time did not supplant apparent time in national almanacs and ephemerides until the early 19th century. A description of apparent and mean time was given by Naville Maskelyne in the Nautical Almanac for 1767. 
Apparent time is that deduced immediately from the Sun, whether from the observation of his passing the meridian, or from his observed rising or setting. This time is different from that shown by clocks and watches well regulated at land, which is called equated or mean time." He went on to say that, at sea, the apparent time found from observation of the Sun must be corrected by the equation of time, if the observer requires the mean time, the right time was originally considered to be that which was shown by a sundial. When good mechanical clocks were introduced, they agreed with sundials only near four dates each year, so the equation of time was used to correct their readings to obtain sundial time. Some clocks, called equation clocks, included an internal mechanism to perform this correction. Later, as clocks became the dominant good timepieces, uncorrected clock time, i.e., mean time, became the accepted standard. The readings of sundials, when they were used, were then, and often still are, corrected with the equation of time, used in the reverse direction from previously, to obtain clock time. Many sundials, therefore, have tables or graphs of the equation of time engraved on them to allow the user to make this correction. The equation of time was used historically to set clocks. Between the invention of accurate clocks in 1656 and the advent of commercial time distribution services around 1900, there were three common land-based ways to set clocks. Firstly, in the unusual event of having an astronomer present, the sun's transit across the meridian the moment the sun passed overhead was noted, the clock was then set to noon and offset by the number of minutes given by the equation of time for that date. Secondly, and much more commonly, a sundial was read, a table of the equation of time usually engraved on the dial was consulted and the watch or clock set accordingly. These calculated the mean time, albeit local to a point of longitude. The third method did not use the equation of time, instead, it used stellar observations to give sidereal time, exploiting the relationship between sidereal time and mean solar time. Of course, the equation of time can still be used, when required, to obtain apparent solar time from clock time. Devices such as solar trackers, which move to keep pace with the sun's movements in the sky, frequently do not include sensors to determine the sun's position. Instead, they are controlled by a clock mechanism, along with a mechanism that incorporates the equation of time to make the device keep pace with the sun. Ancient history — Babylon and Egypt The irregular daily movement of the sun was known by the Babylonians. Book 3 of Ptolemy Almagest is primarily concerned with the Sun's anomaly, and he tabulated the equation of time in his handy tables. Ptolemy discusses the correction needed to convert the meridian crossing of the Sun to mean solar time and takes into consideration the non-uniform motion of the Sun along the ecliptic and the meridian correction for the Sun's ecliptic longitude. He states the maximum correction is 8 and a third time degrees or 5 ninths of an hour Book 3, Chapter 9. However he did not consider the effect to be relevant for most calculations since it was negligible for the slow-moving luminaries and only applied it for the fastest-moving luminary, the Moon. <inaudible> medieval and Renaissance astronomy Based on Ptolemy discussion in the Almagest, medieval Islamic astronomers such as al-Khwarizmi, al-Batani, Kushyar ibn Laban, Jamshid al-Kashi and others, made improvements to the solar tables and the value of obliquity, and published tables of the equation of time in their Zij astronomical tables. After that, the next substantial improvement in the computation didn't come until Kepler's final upset of the geocentric astronomy of the ancients. Gerald J. Toomer uses the medieval term, equation, from the Latin equatio, for Ptolemy difference between the mean solar time and the apparent solar time. Johannes Kepler's definition of the equation is the difference between the number of degrees and minutes of the mean anomaly and the degrees and minutes of the corrected anomaly. <laughs> apparent time versus local mean time Until the invention of the pendulum and the development of reliable clocks during the 17th century, the equation of time as defined by Ptolemy remained a curiosity, of importance only to astronomers. However, when mechanical clocks started to take over timekeeping from sundials, which had served humanity for centuries, the difference between clock time and sundial time became an issue for everyday life. 
Apparent solar time is the time indicated by the sun on a sundial or measured by its transit over a preferred local meridian, while mean solar time is the average as indicated by well-regulated clocks. The first tables to give the equation of time in an essentially correct way were published in 1665 by Christian Huygens. Huygens, following the tradition of Ptolemy and medieval astronomers in general, set his values for the equation of time so as to make all values positive throughout the year. Another set of tables was published in 1672 73 by John Flamsteed, who later became the first astronomer royal of the new Royal Greenwich Observatory. These appear to have been the first essentially correct tables that gave today's meaning of mean time rather than mean time based on the latest sunrise of the year as proposed by Huygens. Flamsteed adopted the convention of tabulating and naming the correction in the sense that it was to be applied to the apparent time to give mean time, the equation of time, correctly based on the two major components of the sun's irregularity of apparent motion, was not generally adopted until after Flamsteed's tables of 1672-73, published with the posthumous edition of the works of Jeremiah Horrocks, Robert Hooke who mathematically analyzed the universal joint, was the first to note that the geometry Geometry and mathematical description of the non -secular equation of time and the universal joint were identical, and proposed the use of a universal joint in the construction of a mechanical sundial. Topic: 18th and early 19th centuries. The corrections in Flamsteed's tables of 1672 to 1673 and 1680 gave mean time computed essentially correctly and without need for further offset. But the numerical values in tables of the equation of time have somewhat changed since then, owing to three factors. General improvements in accuracy that came from refinements in astronomical measurement techniques. Slow intrinsic changes in the equation of time, occurring as a result of small long-term changes in the Earth's obliquity and eccentricity affecting, for instance, the distance and dates of perihelion, and the inclusion of small sources of additional variation in the apparent motion of the Sun, unknown in the 17th century, but discovered from the 18th century onwards, including the effects of the Moon, Venus and Jupiter. From 1767 to 1833, the British Nautical Almanac and Astronomical Ephemeris tabulated the equation of time in the sense mean minus apparent solar time. Times in the almanac were in apparent solar time, because time aboard ship was most often determined by observing the sun. In the unusual case that the mean solar time of an observation was needed, one would apply the equation of time to apparent solar time. In the issues since 1834, all times have been in mean solar time, because by then the time aboard ship was increasingly often determined by marine chronometers. In the unusual case that the apparent solar time of an observation was needed, one would apply the equation of time to mean solar time, requiring all differences in the equation of time to have the opposite sign than before. As the apparent daily movement of the Sun is one revolution per day, that is 360 degrees every 24 hours, and the Sun itself appears as a disk of about 0.5 degrees in the sky, simple sundials can be read to a maximum accuracy of about one minute. Since the equation of time has a range of about 33 minutes, the difference between sundial time and clock time cannot be ignored. In addition to the equation of time, one also has to apply corrections due to one's distance from the local time zone meridian and summer time, if any. The tiny increase of the mean solar day due to the slowing down of the Earth's rotation, by about 2 milliseconds per day per century, which currently accumulates up to about 1 second every year, is not taken into account in traditional definitions of the equation of time, as it is imperceptible at the accuracy level of sundials. Major components of the equation <inaudible> Eccentricity of the Earth's orbit The Earth revolves around the Sun. As seen from Earth, the Sun appears to revolve once around the Earth through the background stars in one year. If the Earth orbited the Sun with a constant speed, in a circular orbit in a plane perpendicular to the Earth's axis, then the Sun would culminate every day at exactly the same time, and be a perfect time keeper except for the very small effect of the slowing rotation of the Earth. 
But the orbit of the Earth is an ellipse not centered on the Sun, and its speed varies between 30.287 and 29.291 km per second, according to Kepler's laws of planetary motion, and its angular speed also varies, and thus the Sun appears to move faster relative to the background stars at perihelion currently around the 3rd of January and slower at aphelion a half year later. At these extreme points this effect varies the apparent solar day by 7.9 s per day from its mean. Consequently, the smaller daily differences on other days in speed are cumulative until these points, reflecting how the planet accelerates and decelerates compared to the mean. As a result, the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit contributes a periodic variation which is in the first order approximation a sine wave with an amplitude of 7.66 minutes and a period of one year to the equation of time. The zero points are reached at perihelion at the beginning of January and aphelion beginning of July. The extreme values are in early April negative and early October positive. Topic: <inaudible> Obliquity of the ecliptic. However, even if the Earth's orbit were circular, the perceived motion of the sun along our celestial equator would still not be uniform. This is a consequence of the tilt of the Earth's rotational axis with respect to the plane of its orbit, or equivalently, the tilt of the ecliptic, the path Sun appears to take in the celestial sphere with respect to the celestial equator. The projection of this motion onto our celestial equator, along which clock time is measured, is a maximum at the solstices, when the yearly movement of the Sun is parallel to the equator causing amplification of perceived speed and yields mainly a change in right ascension. It is a minimum at the equinoxes, when the Sun's apparent motion is more sloped and yields more change in declination, leaving less for the component in right ascension, which is the only component that affects the duration of the solar day. A practical illustration of obliquity is that the daily shift of the shadow cast by the Sun in a sundial even on the equator is smaller close to the solstices and greater close to the equinoxes. If this effect operated alone, then days would be up to 24 hours and 20.3 seconds long measured solar noon to solar noon near the solstices, and as much as 20.3 seconds shorter than 24 hours near the equinoxes. In the figure on the right, we can see the monthly variation of the apparent slope of the plane of the ecliptic at solar midday as seen from Earth. This variation is due to the apparent precession of the rotating Earth through the year, as seen from the Sun at solar midday. In terms of the equation of time, the inclination of the ecliptic results in the contribution of a sine wave variation with an amplitude of 9.87 minutes and a period of a half year to the equation of time. The zero points of this sine wave are reached at the equinoxes and solstices, while the extrema are at the beginning of February and August negative and the beginning of May and November positive. Topic: <laughs> Secular effects. The two above-mentioned factors have different wavelengths, amplitudes and phases, so their combined contribution is an irregular wave. At epoch 2000 these are the values in minutes and seconds with UT dates ET 